Good morning. Good morning, and welcome to worship the second Sunday in Advent. We invite you to open your hearts to the Holy Spirit, knowing that wherever you are in your journey of faith, Christ meets you here. We're going to invite the Crandall family forward. Um, they have a little dialogue to read and to light our candles. Thank you. <laughs> I want to be safe, do it right, and be able to enjoy the holiday season. But I have a list of things I want to do and probably won't get to. Me too. And it is sad, but it has made me think about what is essential. There are essential workers that still have important work to do. The prophet Isaiah reminds us to prepare our hearts for God by saying, prepare the way of the Lord. Opening our heart to God is like making it easier for Jesus to come to us by building a highway making the rough places smooth, the crooked places straight, and the uneven places filled in and leveled out. I am grateful for safe roads to travel on and for cell phones and the internet to stay connected with all my friends and family. It is hard to be away from people you love. I think of that when I hear how God loves us and came to be with us, born as a baby on Christmas. We light this second candle because love is essential. Please stand as you are able. We take these times of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Amen. 
Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are captive by sin in spite of our best efforts. We have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven and you are free. Free from all that holds you back and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted by Christ's peace, and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We continue with our gathering hymn, Prepare the Royal Highway. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of our Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, 
for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and prayers, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer for you alone. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, strengthen us to serve you with purified lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. In grand, flowing, poetic lines, the prophet announces that the exile of God's people in Babylon is over. God will deliver Israel and will care for her as a shepherd cares for the sheep. This word can be trusted because the only enduring reality in life is the word of God. The first reading is from Isaiah 40, 1 through 11. Comfort, oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she served her team that her penalty is paid, that she received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert the highway for your God. Every valley shall be lifted up, every mountain and every hill be made low. And the uneven ground shall become the level, and the rough place is a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken." A voice says, cry out, and I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass, their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of the Lord stands forever. Get up to the high, get up to the high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See the Lord God comes with might, and his arms rule for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. Here ends the reading. We'll now read Psalm responsively. <clears throat> you have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. 
You have, given, you have forgiven the inequity of your people. And blotted out all their sins. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying. For you speak peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Truly, your salvation is very near to those who fear you. That your glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Faithfulness shall spring up from the earth. And righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity. And our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before the Lord. And shall prepare for God a pathway. This short letter deals with pressing concerns regarding the final advent of Jesus, especially concerns that could rise over its apparent delay. The author of the letter calls on Christians to anticipate the promise coming of the Lord through conduct dedicated to God. The second reading is from 2 Peter 3, verses 8 through 15a. But do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to have, all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all, thing, since all these things are to be dissolved in a way that, in that way, what sort of people ought you be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hasting to come the day of the God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will, meet, will melt with fire? But in accordance with this promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth, where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of the Lord as his salvation. Here ends the reading. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him. And they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Douglas Bailey writes from his book of Hard Truth for Advent, Rock Turning. Several years ago, I heard a story that galvanized me. It's a story of some Catholic nuns in Cleveland, Ohio. I don't know the name of their order, but they have committed their lives to working in the Catholic schools in the Cleveland's inner city. Day after day, they focus their faith and energy on the education of inner city youngsters, youngsters whose 
lives are at risk in so many areas. One day, out of nowhere, a wonderful gift was given to these nuns. The gift was to pay for the entire order to go on a vacation. Vans were supplied, and all the necessary money for their trip was contributed anonymously. So that summer, the nuns closed their order house and headed to the vacation spot of their choice, the Rocky Mountains. Most of them had never seen the Rockies except in their imaginations. They were awed by the glory of the mountains. They would stop and ponder and behold and not be able to take their eyes off the majesty that they were experiencing. They noticed, however, that every time they stopped, Sister Margaret, one of the smallest members of their order, would move to the edge of the group and then disappear for a while. She'd return sometime later. They didn't know what she was doing. So on one particular occasion, when they had stopped to behold a majestic view, they decided they would follow her. She stole away from the group and made her way down into a gully. They watched her as she walked into the gully. She bent down and reached under a sizable rock and then turned the rock upside down. She brushed her hands and turned around to walk back up the trail. When she looked up, the entire order was watching her. Margaret, what are you doing? I'm turning over a rock, she replied. Why, they asked. Do you do that every time? She answered, yes. Why do you do that? And she replied, because I will never pass this way again. And it's my intent to have made a difference while I was the here. So I turned some rocks over so that this place is different because I passed here. What rocks does an urban church like the one this man is preaching in in Memphis have in common? What rocks do I need to turn over inside of me in order to be ready for the kingdom of God to make it its way through all the barriers that I put up. I think there needs to be some rock turning going on inside of me in order that I can, with the help of the truth teller like John the baptizer, maybe taste and smell the real experience of Jesus' birth in the interior manger of my life. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. So, confession of a pastor. I think I heard somebody say, oh no. Uh, so anyway, uh, normally on this Sunday we're in our albs, um, and so I'm sorry, but um, my alb broke this morning. So uh, if you're a good sewer uh, um, with button repair, my alb could use some help uh, in there. Or maybe it's, I don't know, one or the other. One or the other. Um, the story uh, from Mark's Gospel, uh, it's unlike any other the the thoughts and the ideas that we have about Advent uh, and what we consider the entire Christmas season, right? Um, and I, I want to make a distinction that, that that even though we we exchange gifts and we we send out all kinds of cards and and letters and 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 everything else that we are not uh, we are not in Christmas. And, and that is the truth. We are preparing for Christmas. And it is coming. But that's where we're at. We're stuck in this world of preparation. Of doing the work. If you will, for what is to come. And we know that, that Christ came into the world and we know that we will hear the story of how 
when Mary goes to see Elizabeth, John's mother, that John leaps. John leaps inside of her womb, for he knows that he's in the presence of the one that is to come. And that's where we find ourselves in that time of preparation. And that's a hard place to be sometimes, isn't it? Be in that prep time. Because we don't like prep time. Ever. Right? It, prep time bothers us. That, that waiting. I mean, just think back, right? I mean, all of you uh, have uh, young kids that are just probably already eager already eager to go and unwrap those presents that are underneath the tree. They're eager to to just see what's inside of there. And I think that that sometimes is the the problem, that we don't take the time to think. We, we We just want to act. And maybe this is our demise. It's probably a great possibility, right, that this is part of our demise because... We have everything at the touch of our fingers. We don't have to wait for something. I read in one, in one, of, uh, one of these notes uh, that I had that, that literally if a site that we go to to look for something is 0.25 seconds slower than another site, we'll go to another site. 0.25, are you kidding me? We can't wait. We can't wait that long for something? What are we in such a hurry and rush about? Why can't we be like these nuns that saw the beauty of the world that surrounded them? Or can't we take the time to just do something small, if you will, like Sister Margaret and turn over a rock to make the place look a little bit different? I mean, every time that I see Todd get into a vehicle of some sort around the building, I see a change. I see a modification within the landscape around our building. And go, man, that looks so much better today. When did we get in such a rush, in such a hurry? We couldn't find the joy in the right now in the in the prep work, in the preparation time. We want everything literally now. Where does that take us? Where does that take the next generation, if you will? I mean, I don't know how much faster things can get. And in all reality, and the faster that we do things, do we really take heart and do we really remember them? Or are we so focused on the next thing that we forget about the current thing and where we're at? As much as I will tell you that I despise how we have had to change under this world of covid I do think that it has forced many of us to take the time to slow down and give thanks for the here and the now. To take maybe a little bit more time in prep work and experiencing some of the journey instead of thinking, oh, it's just another task that I have to do. Jesus didn't hurry anything. He lived in the moment with the people that he was with and loved them unconditionally and savored the time and the experience that he had. He reminded the disciples over and over again not to shoo people away, but to bring them in, to spend time with them, whether they were a little child or they were a a gathering of 5,000 to feed. 
I know that it's difficult in this time and that we have to be safe, but there are ways that we can take the time to celebrate and enjoy the time and the gift that we have in each other. And the love that Christ has for us all in our lives. And just maybe, just maybe if we turn over that rock, it'll make a difference, not just for our lives, but for the lives of others that will impact just by turning over that one small, itty-bitty rock that's a barrier and divider between us and them and others. Just think of the big boulder that Christ turned over for us to give us freedom, to give us peace, to give us joy, to give us love, to give us happiness in our life. Shouldn't we turn over some smaller rocks to make that difference in other people's lives? I think so. It's the season of preparation. Prepare your hearts to love anew and experience God's love anew for you to share with others in this wonderful and great Advent season that we have been blessed with. Amen. And thanks be to God. All earth is hopeful, the Savior comes at last. Furrows lie open for God's creative task. This the labor of people who struggle to see how God's truth and justice set everybody free. People of Israel, you heard the prophet tell of a virgin mother well, very Manuel, she conceived him, God, with us, the brother whose birth restores hope and courage to children of this earth. Mountains and valleys will have to be prepared, new highways open, new protocols declared. Almost here, God is nearing in beauty and grace. All clear, every gateway in haste, come out in haste. We first saw Jesus, a baby in a crib. This same Lord Jesus today has come to live. In our world, He is present. In neighbors we see, our Jesus is with us and never sets us free. I invite you to please rise as you're able as we confess the faith of the church using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe believe in in God, God, the Father Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. earth. I believe believe in in Jesus Jesus Christ, Christ, God's only Son, Son, our Lord. Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God of power and might, tear open the heavens and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. 
faithful God. You teach us to wait for you with faithfulness and patience. Sustain and support us in our doubts and questions. Nurture our faith as we discern and enact your mission. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Loving God, you set the stars in the sky and breathe life into the earth. Renew the face of creation where it is in need of your healing touch. Mend the wounds of environmental damage and restore balance to ecosystems that all creation can declare your praise. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is is great. Steadfast God, you never tire of seeking justice. Where people suffer from discrimination, judgment, and injustice, speak words of truth and comfort. Lead us toward a world where faithfulness will sprout underfoot and righteousness rain down from above. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Leading God, you ask us to make uneven ground smooth. Make even the disparities between your people. Sustain and support people with physical and intellectual disabilities. Accompany disability advocates who work for a world accessible to all. And teach us to celebrate the great diversity in our midst. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is is great. great. Tender God, you know sorrow and joy alike. We pray for those in our families and congregation who are not joyful in this holiday season. Comfort those who grieve. Be a companion to all who are lonely. Tend to those who are sick or struggling with depression. Especially this day, Lord, we lift up Brian, Mel, Lindsay, Betty, Ruby, Paul, Ina, Mike, Pete, Kathleen, Darren, Susan, Jesse, Pearl, Barry, Michelle, Robert, Larry, Sheila, Jillian, Ellen, Craig, Todd, and those we name out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Gather all people in your healing embrace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Eternal God, we give you thanks for the saints who have prepared your way in the wilderness and taught us to continue their faithful work. Make their generous lives an example for all. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. And everlasting Father, we give you thanks for faith communities across this world, and we hold them in prayer. And this day, as we pray, we lift up our members by name. We pray for Brooke, Janie, Charlotte, Kimberly, Abigail, Colton, Dan, Jess, Charlene, Wade, Melanie, Cindy, and Jenna. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the peace of Christ which surpasses all understanding be with you all. And also with you. Please share a sign of peace with one another. That's peace. That's peace. We continue with our thanksgiving for the word. We praise you, O God, for your creating word. You set the foundations of the world and gave breath to every living thing. There is no rock like you. Blessed be God forevermore. Our Our hearts hearts sing of your your mercy mercy and might. might. We praise you, O God, for your liberating word. In your steadfast love, you led the people whom you redeemed. You guided them by your strength to the land of promise. You have lifted up the lowly. Blessed be God forevermore. Our hearts sing of your mercy and might. 
We praise you, O God, for your life-giving word. Your word became flesh and lived among us, full of grace and truth. You have looked with favor on the lowliness of your servants. Blessed be God forevermore. Our hearts sing of your mercy and might. Blessed be God from this time on and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its setting, with Miriam, Hannah, and Mary, we give you thanks and praise for your creating, liberating, and life-giving word. Send us forth in the power of your spirit to sing of your greatness and serve all people, following Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together as our Lord has taught us. Our Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for our announcements. Well, we have a few things going on today still. We have bell practice following worship. We have a virtual Sunday school. We have blast and Acts 29 online. And then at 1 o'clock, um, there's a baptism that I'm having here uh, with a family. So it's wonderful to be able to still do that as they gather. And then 4 o'clock, soul yoga. Uh, tomorrow at 10 o'clock, the widows group will be meeting. And uh, Tuesday at 5 o'clock uh, will be uh, holy yoga or soul yoga. Um. <laughs> And then on Wednesday, we have our quilters at 9.30. Confirmation again, 4 o'clock is for 7th graders, 6.30 for the 10th graders, uh, and then bell practice and the If uh, Book Bible Study are at 7.30. Right. Uh, on Thursday, um, I don't know of a Bible study that we're doing on Thursday, so, um, but we do have ministerial at, uh, at noon and then soul yoga uh, at 5. And then our worship lineup again for... Next week on the 13th, 9.30 worship, bell practice, Sunday school, uh, Blast X29, and yoga then at 4 o'clock. And then if you didn't receive the email uh, uh, for signups, uh, you can go out to Sign Up Genius and look for Martin's Lutheran Church. Our Christmas Eve services are posted out there. We'll have services at 2.30, 4 o'clock, 7, and 8.30. And I can tell you that I was blown away um, that about... Six hours after I sent out the email with the, with the signups that we had close to 100 people signing up for worship already on Christmas Eve, which is uh, thanks be to God uh, for all of that. There's a lot of people making their plans, preparing. Yeah, preparing, absolutely. Uh, speaking of which, uh, you can see there's piles of stuff, but can always use uh, more uh, for uh, the uh, Operation Shoebox and laundry baskets for the homeless shelter inside the insert of the announcement page. Uh, is, uh, uh, is some information of items that we need for those. Uh, so please, if you, if you can, uh, let's uh, make some more happen. And then uh, poinsettias, again, we will still be doing that. So hopefully you've seen that information. And if you're interested, you can uh, place an order by uh, next Sunday. Uh, please have that into the office so we can get those ready. Uh, the Giving Tree uh, is out there. Uh, last time I looked at that on Friday, uh, I want to say that there were 10 tags left. Uh, and, uh, and so if you, if you can uh, contribute and help in that way for, uh, for the YWCA uh, Grace Gardens, uh, that would be awesome. Mm-hmm. I saw a couple of them go this morning as well. So there is also the Sign Up Genius link for the families to read uh, for Advent. So I believe we have someone again for this coming Sunday, but I think the fourth Sunday is still open on the 20th. Correct. So if, uh, again, your family or you would just like to come up and do that reading and light the candles, that would be awesome. Just uh, follow that link to sign up. A huge thank you uh, to Stacy Link and Amy Almer uh, for creating our beautiful, uh, if you will, Christmas atmosphere that's around. So huge thank you to those ladies uh, for com- coming and taking care uh, of making this beautiful uh, scenery that you see around us. Um, do you have any other announcements? Do you, are you missing color sheets still? 
there's, I think, one set of color sheets out that we we're just waiting to contact and try to uh, get back in. And I mean, I know there's different uh, situations and things like that, but we are prepping the walls and all these other things like that to put them up and uh, look, look forward to doing that. Yeah, so, so. don't take the command strips down on the <laughs> east wall uh, in the entryway. They're lined uh, up just so. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're perfect, yeah. right? Uh, and then one other announcement uh, that uh, we received word this morning. Uh, please keep... Uh, Joan Carvel uh, and her family in your prayers uh, as Joan's uh, dad passed away this morning. Uh, and so I don't know what the office will look like this week because, well, we're left probably in charge. <laughs> and so, uh, and so uh, but keep Joan uh, and her family uh, in your prayers uh, as her dad, Richard, uh, passed away uh, mm -hmm. this morning. So um, prayers go out. Uh, to her and uh, and her entire family. Yeah. Talk about people that that made a difference by turning over a little rock. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember going to Forest Hills playing golf, uh, and we'd get up uh, on a hole, and there he was with a bottle of cold water for us, uh, and it really made a difference on a hot day. So, mm -hmm. uh, huge, huge, uh, huge loss uh, for our, for her and her family. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't have any other announcements. Any other announcements uh, that we might have missed out here? Again, just a safe travel, though, as well. I know people are starting to travel and do their uh, you know, plans for the winter and things like that, too. So we uh, offer those prayers for people, too. I invite you to stand as you are able, and we will send you with this blessing. The creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. The long-expected Savior, fill you with love. The unexpected Spirit, guide your journey, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We go off singing our sending hymn on Jordan's Bank the Baptist Cry. Prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God.